Let's see what James and Kirk had to say about the album when we caught up with them at Metallica HQ in San Francisco. This album has been such an awesome collaboration of all of us. I mean, it's a testament to our gifts and our brotherhood. Uh, grow, you know, growing through the albums, we, we, we go through phases, you know. It got to be the James and Lars project, you know, around Justice for All. Then the Black album started to open up more and more. And this is kind of the epitome of that uh, openness, you know. We came in here with no riffs, no song titles, no uh, lyrics, no anything. Nothing. Started from no scratch. No, no, bass no bass player. <laughs> Let's just start. I'm not going to bring any songs in that are I'm attached to and get all egoed out over. But we just went for it from scratch, and it felt so great. Anyway, um, Saint Anger, to me, was very... Uh, just not quite right. <laughs> To juxtaposition, you know, it's like a juxtaposition. Yeah, an oxymoron. What'd you call me? <laughs> Sorry, uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, saint and anger. You know, they're not supposed to go together. And what I learned going through rehab that rehab that anger has a purpose, and it doesn't do you any good if it's sitting down in here festering and boiling. You know, since you're 17 years old. Uh, being able to express that in a healthy way, that, that's basically what it's about. Metallica have pushed the boundaries of artistic music videos, but they didn't make a video until 1998's clip for one. It's pretty interesting that the concept of video and how it's changed over the years. You know, if you don't do a video, some, you know, you're not a fan or something. It's really weird that, you know, back then it was more of a, oh, this is a trend or a fad or something that's, you know. You also have to understand, uh, this was the 80s and you know, all, a lot of the MTV videos, or, or, or metal videos that were on MTV, were all a certain kind of video. They all had chicks and, you know, cars, and they showcased, you know, the rock and roll party lifestyle, and that was all just so cheesy to us. You know, we almost didn't want to be, uh, uh, put out a video because we didn't want to associate ourselves with that kind of uh, perception, you know, because that's what videos were back then. I mean, they're downright cheesy. The first single off the new album is St. Anger. The video was shot over two days at San Quentin Prison in San Francisco. I hope it comes across as real. Uh, you know, we were really there. These are real inmates. This is the real 150-year-old prison, one of the oldest ones in California. And uh, for me, it was pretty cathartic. It was, uh, you know, I... I could have easily been in there, you know, in some of the behaviors that I had in my past, you know. I'm uh, When we left there, I've never hugged my wife and my kids as hard as I did, man. The video itself hopefully captures that pent-up anger, the just frustration, uh, and um, the loneliness that those guys have. And Heavy metal music has long been considered the music for angry young men. But in recent years, it seems that hip-hop is beginning to take this mantle. Could this be the end for metal? There will always be people who are, you know, write the sound of just angry, angry lyrics with loud guitars and, and like, you know, heavy, fast beats. And that's just not something you're getting a lot of in hip-hop music. I don't think that it actually, you know, one would uh, take the place of another. I definitely think that they can coexist, but I, I de definitely don't think that one has been uh, you know, uh, subsidized by another at all. I think there will always be a, a place where, where metal will, will always just be there. It'll survive. I mean, it always has. Yeah. But yeah, hip-hop is another form of expression. Absolutely. Are you a fan of Eminem at all? Yeah, I like I like uh, some of the later stuff that he's been doing. I think he's gotten past the sensationalism stuff, and uh, people are taking him serious for a human being, you know, telling his story through his music. I think he's a great lyricist. I mean, he really, really is is good at telling a story through his music. Yeah, you know, he's just another angry young man who's found his medium through hip hop instead of heavy metal. Metallica have written some of the most memorable guitar riffs of all time, so I had to ask them. What's your favorite riff that when you play, you just, <laughs> I am the man? There's so many, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh man, that that's a that's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, cause all you know, on the new album, there's so many that are like, I mean, the, the riff for Saint Anger it is a, just is a killer. But then you go back and you start playing old songs again, and you're you know, Harvester Sorrow. That's a good. Wow. Well, okay. <laughs> and you know, I mean, I do have to say that Kirk wrote Enter Sandman. So I must say that's one of the most memorable riffs. That I usually forget. I, <laughs> I'd have to say that opening lick in Seek and Destroy is, is super cool. When you hear that, you go, whoa, that's great. That's a classic. I mean, the first time I'd ever heard that, I knew that I, I, that would be in my head for the rest of my life. You know, this is one of those riffs you don't forget. On the first time you hear it, you go, that's a riff. You know, it's like smoke on the water or something. Well, for me... <laughs> You know. Oh, sure. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Metallica have been writing music for well over 20 years, a lot longer than most of their contemporaries from the early days. You know, it's just, it's all all, all down to, to uh, chemistry, you know, but it, it's also down uh, uh, down to personal chemistry as well. I mean, you know, you can have, have, a, have a great musical chemistry and make great music and be a great band, but if you don't have great personal chemistry, you're going to run into a lot of obstacles, I feel. Yeah. You know, if you can't work with someone, you know, things are going to be rocky. I mean, that's really the bottom line. Here's some classic Metallica, Fade to Black, live in concert. This is an unbelievable sanctuary for us. It's, well, we've rehearsed here for probably the last, what? Since like 94, 95. Yeah. Oh, quite a long time. Definitely looked a little different back then. There were squatters up in the roof, up in the rafters and stuff. Uh, uh, we, it, it came up for sale. And it was, you know, Metallic had never really bought kind of a group thing together, you know, besides a bunch of snake pits and stages and stuff that end up with scrap metal. But for us to own a building, you know, and consolidate a fan club from Knoxville, website from uh, Sweden, and and uh, we had the, uh, the, the the gear, you know, the, the swag was down in LA. So we got all together here at HQ, and, you know, uh, all our gear is out there. It's like a, you know, it's a playground. There's, there's amps everywhere. Uh, it's like a clubhouse, you know, all the stuff on the walls and things in our own individual rooms that aren't quite allowed at home, you know, at least in my home, you know. You're not putting that up in here. Okay, uh, down to the club it goes. Yeah, it's interesting because, like, a lot of people comment, you know, they come here for the first time and they look around and they see all our, our personal stuff that we brought over from the house, you know, and all these Metallica posters that have just been lying around, up, you know, and, and, and the, the next thing they, they know, you know, they think they're at... Well, this is what one person said to me. He said, this place is like a Metallica museum. <laughs> and I thought about it, and I'm like, really, really didn't mean it to be that way, but I guess it could be a museum to an outsider who, who comes in and sees all these old posters from, like, 1983 and all these pictures that were never published or, or whatever, you know. Have you got more memorabilia spread out around the place? You've got warehouses with, you know, old props and stuff, or has it all been consolidated here? No, I think uh, in all our personal uh, storage places, there's a ton more stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah. We just keep buying stuff and never sell it. It's like, <laughs> the pack we got warehouses filled with stuff, you know, amps <laughs> from this tour of, you know, lions from the Justice Tour and, uh, yeah, but Doris. we got Doris's head hanging in the other room. We got the original Ride the Lightning backdrop from 84, uh, bit of a skull really chair, cool. skull throne. That you're you're oh, sharing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's that from? Oh, it's just, uh, this guy I knew in Texas built it for me. It's, it's built off roadkill. <laughs> yeah. It's the roadkill throne. And uh, like James said, you know, the, this place ends up with a lot of stuff that isn't allowed in our own. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not your. Ta your chair for the dinner table. Yeah, no, it's not something that my wife and I like sit in and watch TV. Like, please, yeah. <laughs> but also just stuff that we never really would embrace before. You know, it's like okay, that's that, and we'll get to it whenever. I think we're better better off looking back and enjoying, kind of embracing the stuff that we've accomplished.